Welcome back to Our Ventura TV. I'm Lynn Fairley. This is the interview of my dreams because I have a gentleman here who's been in radio for over 60 years. Welcome, Chuck Cecil. Lynn, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted you're here. <laughs> now, Chuck Cecil has been on radio, as I said, since, ni since 1952. And some of you know that I'm in radio. And I've only been in radio for four years, so I'm just a little kid compared to what you've done. <laughs> Chuck Cecil, you're famous for the swinging years, something that was broadcast out of KFI for very many years in Los Angeles, but we'll go back a little bit farther than that and okay. get to where you actually started. And I think that was in a Model A in high school, you drove to see whom at the big band jazz concert. Oh, that was Tommy Dorsey and his orchestra. Frank Sinatra was band vocalist. And it was about uh, Halloween of 1940. And yes, I had a Model A and uh, drove to the Hollywood Palladium and the Palladium was new, it was just opening. And Tommy Dorsey and his band played there for a whole month. Big bands did that in those days. And you as a teenager collected jazz albums, 33s, RPMs, 78s, 45s, what were they spinning at that time? Well, at that time, they were spinning old 78 RPM records, and I had uh, a generous collection, as most teenagers did, 45s and 78, or 45s and 33 and a thirds, didn't come in until, oh, what, uh, the late 40s or 1950s. And as a kid, because you had older sisters, you were allowed <laughs> to put the needle on the record, but you were not allowed to change the needle. Why is that? Well, that's when I was very young, and we had a wind-up Victrola. A wind-up? A crank-up Victrola mm -hmm. You've turned record it, player? Then that gave it the power. Actually, this is where I was born, back in Oklahoma on a ranch. And uh, we had a collection of 78 RPM records and all different kinds. Some was jazz, some was uh, cowboy music, and uh, some was popular. And um, we had a variety. And yes, we had a wind-up Victrola. That's remarkable. And so there's your love of jazz right there, born yep. in the teen years and in that Model A. But let's fast forward again, mm -hmm. and let's go to when World War II started. World War II started, I was um, in college at Los Angeles City College, and I was taking a course in radio. And um, a variety of people were taking this course. It was supposed to be one of the best entrees into radio uh, available to uh, high school graduates. And uh, the war broke out. Uh, the whole world was sort of disintegrating at that time. Uh, I had a, what I thought was a bad foot. Well, it was a bad foot. And I thought I was never going to go in the service or got a job in, Clown in uh, San Luis Obispo. And, uh, You're doing the news, I think. At the doing time. the news, doing, the doing news. interviews. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to an army base and seeing a sergeant there who had infant paralysis and he was still in uniform. And I thought, why am I letting a small thing like a foot injury keeping me out? So I joined the Navy, signed up for their aviation training. And uh, you were trained to fly many aircraft, but one of your favorites, I think, was the Wildcat. It was the Wildcat. Eventually, we, uh, I became a Navy fighter pilot flying Wildcats. That's yes. right, but your love of jazz never died. <laughs> so when you landed safely, yes. you started radio broadcasting. You started The Swinging Years, which is a very, very popular radio show. Over 20,000 hours of programming of radio shows. Now, yeah. give us an example of what a show would be like. Well, I have five basic uh, CDs that go into the show. And uh, the most important one, I suppose, is the one that has a 15-minute interview. And I have interviewed... Um, Duke Ellington? Duke Ellington, Bing Crosby, uh, Doris Day, 
uh, you Tony actually, Bennett. And Tony Bennett said yes. that you were directly responsible for keeping music alive and that, in <laughs> fact, you're a jazz historian well, because of the music that you've archived. He's very successful because uh, he, he knows how to be, be flattering to people. But it's <laughs> quite true. It's 100% <laughs> true. It's remarkable. And then I think you were actually seated on, was it Peggy Lee's bed? When you did an interview with you her, heard about that. Oh, I oh got yes. my ear to the ground. Yeah, I went to her house to do the interview. We had, I had interviewed Peggy Lee when she was in New York, and it was a telephone interview. And uh, she promised that when she got to uh, back to her home in Beverly Hills, uh, that we could do another interview. And apparently, she spent much of her time lounging in bed. It oh. was comfortable for her. Indeed. And um, there were people around, lounging around. I mean, we were, we were, we were not alone. And, um, but I had to sit on the edge of the bed with my microphone and ho I hold the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> That's remarkable. But a marvelous, warm, generous person, as they all are. And you have all this archived. And in fact, the Jazz Institute in Los Angeles just recently came to your home. And, and cleared out quite a bit of the old tapes, the actual tapes that you yep. were using. You mentioned CD a minute ago, but these were actually tapes at that time. Yep. With the interviews, some photographs, a lot of radio equipment, as a matter of fact, and are uh, installing them presently in an exhibit <laughs> down in the in Jazz Institute in Los Angeles, California. I understand, yes. We yeah. don't know quite yet when that'll be open, but uh, yeah. we'll make sure and get that out. We'll put that in the newspaper so one of these days here in uh, Ventura Good. so that people can go Good. and enjoy that. But what's left in your house, I got to see, and it's, it's amazing what's still there because that's a whole nother museum exhibit that you still have in your home because you currently still broadcast the Swinging Years. I still broadcast the Swinging Years. Actually, we have a basic uh, collection of program of around a thousand hours. And I try to bring new material into it. Uh, as we entered a new age, there was a, I felt a feeling in the audience for not so much Glenn Miller, and maybe a little more traditional jazz or, or more contemporary jazz as we understand it. So I go back through the old uh, masters and um, revise them in, in a sense. Sometimes I have to make corrections and uh, make them a little more presentable if I can. Well, I saw copious detailed notes that are written for every <laughs> single show in your own handwriting. And in, in addition to, uh, well, the music itself and who wrote it and what day it was uh, written and what was happening on that day, it was all sorts of history and little cultural tidbits that were going on. I think the Detroit Tigers won the World Series <laughs> the day who wrote what song. Oh, uh, gosh, I think I've got it here. Uh, I think Bing Crosby recorded Only Forever, Okay. the day the Detroit Tigers won the World Series. Okay? I'd have to look it up in my yeah. notebook. Well, that's the kind of thing that you've collected over the years. It's not just the music, but mm -hmm. it's all the history and all the American culture around it, which is what makes this particularly special. So, for instance, today, this week, May 2014, we could pick out any May of any year that you were broadcasting, mm -hmm. the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, and play the top 10 songs of that year. Is that correct? Well, uh, in, in, during the swinging years, not every, uh, on this day, is in, I have three, three sets of those. So on this day, when I don't have the, the sets, in right off hand. No, I don't expect you to remember exactly what happened today, <laughs> <laughs> although I wouldn't be surprised if you did. Yeah. <laughs> but, but maybe um, one set would say on this day in 1937, mm -hmm. and another uh, uh, set would say on this day in 1941, mm -hmm. and another one might say on this day in 1952. Mm -hmm. And uh, those and go out to the radio station. We it, hear the music. Yes. And we'd hear the history. Yeah. We hear maybe who's playing what bass baseball game. <laughs> and or, or and if you're thing. listening Sunday afternoon to the radio station, you would hear whatever uh, one I put in that and sent to the radio station. Now, the Dodgers were a huge fan of your show. 
And on Saturday nights, I believe, after you had broadcast Saturday morning, mm -hmm. you'd have something called uh, the 76 party, is that correct? The 76 party time, yes. Ah. Uh, the ad agency was Smock, Debnam, and Waddell. And at one time when KFI got the Dodger broadcast, the pregame show was with Vin Scully and Jerry Doggett, originated in the studios of KFI. And, um, and they, uh, they liked the music of the swing in years, so 76 party time became a Saturday night special. And after the, the, the Dodger season was over, they decided to keep that on. We went on for eight or nine years, mm -hmm. the 76 party time. That's terrific. Now, you married your stunningly beautiful, gorgeous wife, Edna, hmm? who's actually here in the studio today watching. <laughs> and you've been together how many years? Oh, you had to ask me that, didn't you? Well, since May uh, 17, 1947, 40, so we don't have to actually count all that out. Uh, and the reason 60, six, 66 six years, years, I think it is. 66 yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, what would you say your secret is for a long relationship, besides jazz music and swing <laughs> dancing? <laughs> yeah, Edna was a big band vocalist. Yes. yes. We, we do share an interest in music and big bands, and... Um, I would say she's very forgiving, and perhaps that's why we've been together this long. Oh, that's very sweet. Very, very sweet. I look forward, by the way, to interviewing you on the radio here locally in Ventura very soon. It's coming Saturday. It'll be a live uh, interview, and then another one after that. Um, it's incredibly interesting for the audience to maybe guess your age, but I'm going to tell them. May I tell them how old you are, Chuck Cecil? Well, certainly. <laughs> because no one's going to believe this. <laughs> Chuck Cecil is 91 years old, <laughs> and you'll be 92 this year, is that correct? I'll be 92 before the year is over, yes. 92 before the year is yeah. over, and going strong. And every Sunday you still do the show, and that's broadcast on which station? K WPPB, WPPB uh, out of Long Island, New York. And uh, I was going to say the name of the gentleman that runs it because he used to be at uh, KUSC, and he's familiar with the show, and they, uh, they well, say it's doing very well. It is doing very well, but what's more important, and it's your show, it's called Chuck Cecil Swing in Years, so you may tune in on Sundays <laughs> if you'd like. Thank you. And I would love to bring this to Venter if I may do sometime, so that's a goal that I have, well, too. That would be wonderful. Wouldn't that be yeah. wonderful? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. It's been a pleasure getting to know you, sir. Thank you so very, very much for giving me the interview of my dreams because I'm just starting out in radio and you're just like an icon and, and, <laughs> and now hopefully a mentor as well. Well, that's very kind of you to say that and to make that observation. Uh, I have been very lucky because radio has been good to me and, and uh, I've enjoyed, I think, every minute of it. Well, you know, radio's not dead. You know, when you need something to do or something to listen to or we have an emergency in the area, you need to tune to the radio. Yep. If you want to hear great talk yep. radio, we've got great stations and we've got still good music on, so radio is definitely not dead. And I probably should say TV isn't that bad either. Well, no, I agree. TV, okay. especially our <laughs> Ventura TV. <laughs> Thank you again very much, my pleasure. Chuck Cecil, my guest. I'm Lynn Fairley. This is our Ventura TV. Please stay tuned for some more awesome programming. Thank you.